Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. I stay on that ground. Welcome to the Lewis Basketball Network. It is your boy, Lewis, and I am back once again with another banger with yet another video. Like button, subscribe, hit that noty to make sure you keep receiving the latest content I truly provide. Appreciate you guys for always taking the time to watch my videos. And without further ado, man, let's get right into it. Make sure to share this video, by the way. So, this video is on, are the Golden State Warriors <laughs> the modern day bad boy Detroit Pistons? You're like, what? You're crazy. The Warriors can't be the Detroit Pistons in this soft ass NBA era that we have. There's just no way that the Warriors can be even compared to the bad boy Pistons. Actually, they can be, and here's why. So, a couple of months ago, if you guys remember, there was a sit-down interview with Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumas, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson, right? So, the Warriors are the current dynasty in the NBA. The Detroit Pistons, for a couple of seasons late in the 80s and then into the 90s, they went to three straight finals, and they won two NBA titles back-to-back. You know, it was the end of the Showtime era. It was the end of the era of Larry Bird and those Celtics of the 80s. Because if you guys remember, the Lakers and Celtics dominated the 80s. And for a brief two-year period, the Pistons were the best team in the NBA. Now, the Pistons garnered a reputation for being... They built a reputation for being physical, for being dirty, for being the most hated team in the NBA. That's what the Golden State Warriors are right now. They're not... They're not in the news for being the most physical team, but they are on the news for being the most hated team in the NBA, just like the Detroit Pistons, just for different reasons. And if you remember, the emphasis on those two championship teams were Detroit's main guys were guards. Same thing with the Golden State Warriors, even though now they have a small forward, seven foot Kevin Durant, but went to two straight finals without him with guards. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. If you guys remember, the Detroit Pistons changed the paradigm when many people said, well, you guys can't win with your type of physical play because it's bad for the NBA and you guys can't win because you have three guards and you don't have a dominant big man. And Bill Lambeer was ahead of his time being a true stretch five shooting three pointers. Like there's no way that you guys could win a championship with that style of play when the traditional way to win a championship was through big men. You have to have a franchise big man. Isaiah Thomas changed all that when him, Joe Dumars, and those great Detroit Piston teams won back-to-back -back NBA championships. They went to five straight Eastern Conference Finals from 1987 to 1991 and went to three straight finals from 88 to 90. The Pistons should have won the 88 finals. They probably were going to be the first team since the Boston Celtics before the Chicago Bulls were the one to accomplish it to three-peat. And people get in on Michael Jordan and say, oh, you know, Michael Jordan beat a bunch of construction workers. He waited until the Pistons got old. Isaiah Thomas was in the prime of his career. So was Joe Dumar. So was Dennis Rodman. Bill Lambeer was the one that was kind of on the tail end because he had just turned 34 in the postseason. I mean, but again, his role was not, like I said, he didn't have a big role as compared to those other players. I mean, he had an important role, but they, it wasn't like such so, so, so huge, like compared to what those other guys had to do. In terms of Joe and Isaiah, like those guys were much more relied upon in terms of what they had to do at both ends of the floor. <clears throat> and Dennis Rodman was their defensive anger, but he was only 30 years old. So, I mean, you look at Vinny Johnson and John, Sa John Sally was also young, too. Like he was only in his mid 20s. I believe he was 26 or 27. So he was young. Uh, so, so, you know, so that's the thing that just, uh, you know, it just confuses me on how. They want to use that whole Jordan face a bunch of construction workers, a bunch of plumbers, and the Pistons got old and making excuses for the fanboyism as to why the, you hate the greatness of Michael Jordan or, you know, praise LeBron James, right? Well, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, the paradigm for teams of jump shooting where jump shooting teams can't win a championship. Isaiah Thomas's was small guards with a stretch five can't win a championship. And guess what happened, ladies and gentlemen, both the Golden State Warriors and the Detroit Pistons were able to change the course of history, saying you don't need a dominant big man to win a championship. You have to have a cornerstone, the right personnel and the right system to be able to win a championship as long as you play offensively and defensively effectively. As long as you can do those two things and you have the right personnel, you can win a championship. You don't have to win the championship the traditional way. Those were the paradigms that were changed. 
And the Golden State Warriors built a, re- a reputation of hate for their success. But their hate mostly comes from Kevin Durant being on the Warriors. Um, in 2016, when Steph Curry stepped up to the forefront as being the best player that season, and people were starting to think that he was the best player in the NBA, which got LeBron mad and his 3-6 Mafia LaCronies mad, that how can a small six foot three guard now be the best player in the NBA over a player like me? He's not athletic. Um, you know, he's not strong. He's not fast. So basically, Curry changed the look in terms of what a best player can look like. And that didn't sit too well with LeBron James or the league. And as a matter of fact, his, com- his camaraderies, point guards, Russell Westbrook, especially Chris Paul, another reason why Curry was hated was because those guys, when, he was, when he came into the league, Westbrook gets constantly compared to him, which Westbrook doesn't like. Who is he? So Russ keeps that same energy with pretty much everybody. Chris Paul was one of the guys who helped Curry when he first came into the NBA, and he was a fan of his. Same thing with LeBron James. It's kind of like how Magic Johnson looked at Isaiah Thomas and why they were so close. Magic Johnson didn't think that Isaiah Thomas would be battling Magic Johnson for a championship. That's where their relationship strained. Same thing with Curry facing LeBron James. LeBron James didn't think that Steph Curry would be the one challenging him for championships. And what has happened? With or without Kevin Durant, totality, the Warriors have won three out of four championships on LeBron's watch. And that's what's gotten LeBron so heated and why he doesn't like Steph Curry mostly. Not just the best player title, but the fact that Steph Curry has been partly in the way of LeBron winning championships. Just like how the Detroit Pistons garnered this reputation as such a bad boy with this bad boy image, they embraced it. Uh, You know, and they was able to, you know, find success off of it. Uh, Just a great team. Two great teams. Um... And the Pistons, what people don't realize is that they changed a lot of they changed style of play. Because of them, there were a lot of rule changes in the NBA. I mean, the issue of the flagrant foul, uh, you couldn't really be that 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 physical. And even then, so the '90s was still a very physical time. Um, you don't see automatic ejections like you see now in today's game for just like I said for just breathing on a person the wrong way, blowing kisses in their ear. You know, you do any one of those things, it's all oh, flagrant too, and you're automatically ejected. Um, so that's why I say that the Golden State Warriors, in a way, were similar to the Detroit Pistons. Like, they both garnered hate, and they were able to win a championship in an untraditional way. So that's why they're comparable. And when they sat down, Isaiah Thomas actually thanked both Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. The reason he thanked them was because he said, you know, you guys, we were looked and we were criticized heavily on that our style of play and the way our team was constructed that we were never able to win a championship And seeing you guys today, I'm very proud of you guys. And it's like now, you know, I can honestly say that you don't have to have win with traditional a traditional way to win a championship. So he said so he really gave them gratitude and appreciated what they brought back. And he was like, look, you guys are pretty much like us, like you guys remind us of us. Like and what we had to deal with when people said that we couldn't win a championship with the way our style of play was. And then you guys had to deal with the same thing. You guys dealt with what we had to deal with back in the day, which is what Isaiah Thomas was saying. And that's why I said that they're very similar, ladies and gentlemen, because when you really look at it, they're homegrown. They were all drafted. You know, they made some trades. You know, they built their team. They developed over time. So they became contenders. And once they became contenders, they took full advantage of it. And again, they didn't win the traditional way. Both of these teams won without a dominant big man, which was the standard bearer in, in, in NBA's yesteryear. I mean, it was all changing from the time that the Dallas Mavericks won the championship, too. Once they won the championship, it was completely different. Same thing with LeBron James when he started the player movement. It's like you had to have a dominant wing score to be able to complement you to win championships. Like, everything was changing. Everything was starting to change in terms of, like, what it meant to win a championship. Like, what is the best way to win? It's a different time, different era. But... That's why I say that the Golden State Warriors are very, very similar to the Detroit Pistons. So as crazy as it sounds, it's a different time. Like I said, different rule changes, different styles. But at the end of the day, that's why Isaiah appreciated what these guys brought to the game because it now, it kind of took a heavy burden like the monkey was off their back when people were criticizing the way they won their championships and now how the Warriors won their championships especially with the fact that they're not the most hated team due to because Kevin Durant, due to because of Steph Curry's prominence in 2015 and 2016. 
um, instead of appreciating the greatness that these guys brought to the game. And then when Michael Jordan, when he won his six championships without a dominant big man, he had a complimentary great wing player in Scottie Pippen at the forward position, you know, who could play the point. But those guys are the ones that change the paradigm. And it's like, you know, we're going to prove to you that we could win a different way, that we could still dominate, dominate basketball without having to do things the traditional way. We could do things out of tradition and still find a way to win. So that's what I wanted to shed some light on. But uh, I definitely agree with Isaiah and them that, you know, that's why the Warriors and the Pistons are very similar. They have very similar paths and why they're actually more comparable. It's just one team is much more physical and played in a more physical time compared to the other team, which is in a more softer NBA, no hand check era, emphasis of the three ball, you know. But that's pretty much why they're so similar. But again, this is your boy, Lewis, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, man, bless up, one love, peace. Thanks for watching.